Today we're going to talk about quantum numbers, also known as the address for any electron inside of an atom. So quantum numbers are just like the address for mailing something to somebody's house. It's a set of numbers and letters that we're going to use to distinguish where the electrons are 90% of the time in an atom. So we'll start with what's called the principal quantum number also known as the principal energy level. And the lowercase n stands for the principal quantum number. And the number n can have certain values, uh, most of which you are familiar with. For example, and could take on the value of 1. Or it could be 2. Uh, then there's the very familiar 3. Also 4, 5, and so forth. Principal energy level or principal quantum number can take on these whole number values 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so forth, all the way up. What does that translate to? What does that mean? If you look at the Bohr model, you can see that the first principal energy level is the very familiar first ring of the Bohr model. N equals 2, second ring, and N equals 3 would be the third ring, and so forth. You can add another, which would be the fourth principal energy level, and N equals 4. And these are familiar to you, I think, from studying the Bohr model. Okay. So electrons could reside in any one of these principal energy levels. And that sounds uh, very simple. It does, however, get a little more complicated, because within those levels, there are what we call sublevels. And those have a slightly different designation. Now, we'll use this uh, lowercase cursive L to stand for these sublevels, okay? And this is what's called the angular momentum quantum number, but you just need to understand it as a sublevel, okay? So we'll just write sublevel, and that's what you have to remember. Now, there are numbers that go with this, but we're not going to use the numbers that are associated with this. We're going to use letters instead. And you'll see how this all comes together later. But for now, what we need to understand is that there are certain letters that are going to be associated with each of these sublevels. For example, S, it's a lowercase s, stands for a sublevel that has a particular shape. And you can look at the pictures in your book, and I'll show you what I'm talking about with the probability model. The shape designated by an S sublevel, I think I'd like to use blue on that, stay consistent. There we go. Here is where the probability comes in. 90% of the time you will find an electron in an S sublevel in some region defined by a sphere. Now S doesn't stand for sphere. But that's what it means. You will find this electron somewhere in the area defined by a sphere. Okay? Every principal energy level has at least one sublevel. But as we get higher and higher in energy, you find more sublevels. So, for example, the principal energy level or principal quantum number two, not only does it contain S sublevels, uh, often you'll call these orbitals, but it also contains what we call P orbitals or P sublevels. These are lowercase p's, in case you were wondering. And there are three of those. Now, what does that look like? Well, it's too complicated to draw on the Bohr model, so we're going to go to our probability model. 
and show you what that might look like. The S orbital in the second principal energy level is bigger. Now, I'm not going to fill in the whole thing, but you get the idea that an electron could be somewhere within that region, a little further out from the nucleus. But an electron could also reside in one of these so-called p orbitals, which have a different shape. So there's one in the y direction, x direction, and if you can imagine this is three-dimensional, the z direction. So you can see now it's getting more complicated. And these electrons can be found in different regions of the atom, defined by these shapes. And we're just using the letters to tell us which shape uh, orbital the electrons might be found in. So we have these S orbitals. The third principal energy level can have, you may have guessed, three different sublevels or three different types of orbitals. S orbital. Again, three of these so called P orbitals and a certain number of what we call D orbitals. There are five possible D orbitals. Now it's going to get really complicated. You can't draw it on here, but this third principal energy level. would have, again, an s orbital much larger than the second principal energy level. So the electrons might be found somewhere in this region. It could have p orbitals and electrons found within the region defined by these p orbitals. Same orientations, x, y, and z, but notice it's bigger. And you can see how complicated this is drawing is getting. And that's why we're going to be using the numbers or the little shorthand to designate where the electrons are because this is just too complicated to show where they actually are. And the d orbitals are even more complicated. You can use your book to see the five different shaped d orbitals. Uh, but my favorite, of course, is the one that has the donut in the middle. See if I can draw that. And so the electrons might be found somewhere in the region defined by this oddly shaped dumbbell slash donut. And you can imagine that as you progress through our little system here, it takes more energy to get into these more complicated arrangements of electrons. Fourth principal energy level, again, there is an s orbital involved. A little more energy and the electrons could reside in any one of three different p orbitals, but again, those are going to be further from the nucleus. There are also five so-called d orbitals. And you may have guessed even more complicated f orbitals. And how many do you think there are of those? Seven so-called f orbitals. And those are just way too complicated for me to draw, so I'm not even going to try. But you can look those up on the internet. And it progresses from there, the fifth energy level, principal energy level, has five different orbitals or sublevels. But we probably won't be using many of those. So now we have the basics of the system of writing quantum numbers, or what we're going to do, which is writing electron configurations. So there's a couple of things we have to remember when we're doing this. 
first thing is that you can have no more than two electrons in any sublevel or orbital. And my pen is dying here, but I'm going to do the best I can. No more than two electrons in any suborbital, uh, any orbital. That means in any s, you can have two electrons. That's it. In any p, you can have only two electrons. That's it. But the total here would be six total electrons there. Okay. So you can have no more than two electrons in any one sublevel or orbital. And this is where you're going to get the numbers that you're familiar with. Eight in the first, or sorry, two in the first row, eight in the second row, and so forth. That's where some of these numbers are going to come into play. The other thing we have to remember is energy. I'll stick with red. Energy increases. As we move across our little chart here, the energy of the electron increases. So an electron that is in the first principal energy level has the lowest amount of energy. If you add energy to that electron, it will jump up to maybe the second principal energy level. In order to be in a higher principal energy level, the electron has to have more energy. But this works down our little chart as well. If an electron is in an s orbital and gains energy, it can move up into a p orbital. So as we move down the chart, these more complicated sublevels require more energy for the electron in order to be in those orbitals. Or, another way of thinking about it, to be found within the region defined by those orbitals. If you only have a smaller amount of energy, you could maybe be in one of the P orbitals. And if you have more energy, you might find yourself, or the electron might find itself, in a D orbital in a more complicated shape. Now we're going to use these numbers and letters to designate exactly where the electrons are in a few elements, or atoms of a few elements, and then you are going to fill in the electron configurations for elements 1 through 36. So let me get you started. 